of all the races that I've won and lost in almost three decades of hydroplane racing, there are many that I remember vividly. Anytime you sit on top of a 2,500 horsepower Thunderbolt that's flying over the water at speeds approaching 200 miles per hour, it's an experience you don't forget, no matter how many thousands of times you crawl into the cockpit. No two rides are ever the same. There's always an element of uncertainty. You're on a course that's constantly changing. Crosswinds and water conditions are extremely critical and frightening. The rooster tail, as magnificent as it is, it's a, it's a wall of water that can literally wash you out of a heat or a race. So when you ask what race stands out above all others, you might guess that it'd be a tough question to answer. But there is one race, one glorious race that'll stand out of my mind as the race for years and years to come. That was on July 31st, 1977, on the Columbia River in Tri-Cities, Washington. The day I broke Garwood's 56-year record of most Gold Cup victories by an individual. That was the day I grabbed my sixth Gold Cup. That was a race that will forever be number one to me. We've had some great names in our sport. The slow motions of Stanley Sayers, Guy Lombardo and his tempo, the Horace Dodgers, the Sheenus of Detroit, just an incredible number of sportsmen who over the years have established records that were great to shoot for. But I guess the hero of just about every hydroplane chauffeur who's ever revved up his Allison or supercharged Rolls-Royce Thunderbolt engine is Gar Wood. Usually, when you hear Garwood's name mentioned, you'll hear the adjective legendary in front of it. If there's anyone who deserved to be honored, so it's Garwood. From 1917 to 1921, Garwood owned the hydroplane circuit. And throughout the 20s and the early 30s, Garwood brought with an imaginative style to hydroplaning that made it an international sport. For over 50 years, hydroplane chauffeurs have chased the records of the Gray Fox of Algonac, and the grand prize of all, a record six Gold Cup victories by a single driver, had eluded them all. The Gold Cup is the Kentucky Derby or Indianapolis 500 of our sport. I tied Garwood with, with five Gold Cup victories in 1972. At the beginning of the 1977 season, many people were convinced that I'd probably have to wait even longer before I got another crack at the record six Gold Cups. The reason for the pessimism was understandable. Although we missed capturing the Gold Cup in 1976, we had won enough races and amassed enough points to become the national champion that year. Obviously, we had a winning boat. It was a boat that simply dominated the hydroplane racing circuit for four years. In 1976, the boat won five races, finished second in two, and failed to finish only once. I had faith in the boat. I had faith that it could continue its winning ways in 1977, but I even had more faith in my crew chief, Jim Lucero. Jim had designed a brand new boat for Atlas Van Line to me. It's a cab over model, which means that the driver sits right up front ahead of the engine. For years, I, I had been one of the most vocal critics of the cab over design for hydroplanes. I honestly felt that a driver sitting in the bow would, well, just wouldn't have the control over his craft that he had driving in the stern. So you can imagine how much faith I must have had in my crew chief, Jim, just to allow him to talk me into test driving his new design. After almost 30 years of sitting behind the engine, I felt absolutely naked the, the first time I perched myself in the cockpit of the new design. And I'll have to admit, the first couple of times out in the new craft almost convinced me that I should maybe stay with the kind of boat that I was used to. But once I got my bearings straight, once I learned to master the Thunderbolt and not let it master me, and once I could feel that the boat was an extension of me and I was comfortable with it and, and seemingly wearing it better and better, I became sold on the design and the possibilities of maybe, maybe even winning a race or two in it. So, with one carefully thought out decision, I broke every rule in the book. I changed my horses in the middle of the stream. I, I withdrew my bet on a sure thing and, and played the long shot. It was the biggest gamble I'd ever taken. I still find it almost incredible that the first time this brand new sleek craft was placed in competitive waters, it powered its way to a first place finish. That was at the Champion Spark Plug Regatta in Miami. And before the season would end, some four months later in San Diego, 
five more wins would belong to the Atlas Van Lines Racing Team. Of course, the biggest race of all was July 31st at Tri-Cities, Washington. That was the Gold Cup. I wanted this one so badly, I could taste it. Of course, wanting something like the Gold Cup isn't enough, really. Fourteen other hydroplane drivers wanted that gold just as much as I did. Professionals like Mickey Riemann and the national champion, Miss Budweiser. Ron Snyder. Pete LaRock. Tom Sheehy. Super rookie, John Petty, and others who, who wanted the Gold Cup just as much, even if for the first time. But this, it appeared, was going to be our day. And it seemed as though even the boat sensed how much this race meant to me. She had never performed so beautifully. In qualifying, she set new course and Gold Cup records, flying over the two and a half mile course at over 128 miles per hour. And then in competition, she did it again. We set the Columbia River course and Gold Cup records for a competition lap that speeds well over 124 miles per hour, beating the old lap record by almost five miles per hour. Even though we swept the preliminary heat, in the back of my mind, I, I knew I could lose it all in any number of ways. I could beat the clock at the starting line and have a lap penalty assessed, overturn in a corner, blow an engine, or just get beaten. I gotta tell you, my heart was racing as fast as the Rolls-Royce power plant as we began jockeying for position for the start of the race. I knew that among the thousands of people lining the banks of the Columbia River, a, a bunch of people from Atlas Van Lines and the United States Navy, for whom I'm a, an official Navy recruiter, and my family and friends were there cheering us on. As I prepared to make my run for the gun, I could almost feel them behind me, urging me to get off to a flying but, but careful start. Hi again, everybody. We're only seconds away from the start of the 73rd Gold Cup. The most important race of the year for these hydroplane chauffeurs, their crews, their spouses, and their boats. The boats are beginning to make their way to the starting line. In hydroplane racing, the Thunderboats begin with a racing start. Remember, the idea is to come pounding down the straightaway as fast as you can fly. Hit the starting line just as the big time clock hits zero. That's the idea. But you also have to have a few races under your belt to get the timing down right. If you jump the gun, you're in trouble. You're penalized a lap. And that just about ends your chances of getting into heavy contention. All right, now the boats are beginning to make their move. They're starting to come down the stretch. All but Muncie and his Atlas Van Lines, you won. I don't even see Bill. Wait a minute, there he is trailing the pack. He's way behind. In fact, Muncie may be out of it. Muncie, better hurry if he's going to catch him. As they approach the starting line, some of the drivers are starting to hold back. Remember, it could be that some have started to make their move too soon. But here comes Muncie. Man, I want to tell you, he is flying. If he can hit that starting line just right, it's going to be way on his way to a victory. He's going to leave everybody else in his rooster tail. And he does. Here he comes. He is flying. Look at Bill Muncie. It's incredible. It looks like everyone else is standing still. Muncie came out of nowhere to take the lead going into the first turn. And believe me, that can be a very important lead. I said that you have to have a few races under your belt to get that timing down right. And Bill Muncie, a real pro, has made me look like a prophet, folks. He's got more races under his belt than any man who's ever lived. Checking the standings in second place, the man who can take the gold cup away from Muncie, Mickey Riemann and the Miss Budweiser. But if Riemann's going to stand a chance to grab this one, he's going to have to reach back and give it everything he's got. Riemann's boat, by the way, you may recall, had been damaged in qualifying runs earlier this week and had to be dragged from the bottom of the river. It's, a, it's an amazing tribute to the Miss Budweiser crew that she's even in the race, much less fighting it out for gold with Muncie. But the Budweiser's going to have to really have something extra if it plans on catching Muncie today. Muncie's unofficial time, listen to this, for the first lap translates to almost 122 and a half miles per hour. And if he keeps that up, nobody, I mean nobody, in the river's going to catch him. Now that 122 and a half miles per hour, as I mentioned, is Muncie's average speed around the whole course. That includes 
His speed on those corners, which, as you know, can really be tricky. Those boats go into the turns at about 140. Come out of them, let's say, at 100, then kick up on the chute to 170 in six or seven seconds. It's got to be an incredible, thrilling ride for a driver. The secret to that rapid acceleration is nitrous oxide. It's that laughing gas your dentist might give you to relieve the pain when you have a tooth pull. It'll make you talk funny. You know, it's like your voice is being played at 78 instead of 33 and a third. Well, it does the same things to those unlimiteds. It boosts the horsepower of those monster engines from 400 to 500 horsepower over their normal 2,500 to 3,000 horses. And that, my friend, that's what makes those babies zip when they come out of the turn. Okay, we're on the final lap now. Bill Muncy has eased off the throttle. He's gonna, he's got this one in his hip pocket. He doesn't want to do any damage to that engine. So he's gonna give it just enough to win comfortably now. Behind him is Mickey Riemann. He should probably take second. Then comes the Squire and Barney Armstrong's machine. You may recall Peter LaRock's KYYX and Tom Sheehy and the Anheuser-Busch Natural Light were forced out of the race with engine problems. Here he comes. Here comes Muncy into the last turn of the final day. He's got to be the happiest man in America. He's got to be showing those ivories from ear to ear. An unprecedented six gold cup victories for Bill Muncy. And if you know this amazing athlete, you know how much this victory means to him. And we're just as happy as we can be for him. Here he comes. It's official. What a day. Atlas Van Lines and Bill Muncy. An historic Gold Cup win today. As I said, this was the race for me, for my personal career particularly. It's the one that, that's just most important to me. For the younger drivers, it's a, a new mark to shoot for. I just hope that I'll be able to live with my record for a while before someone comes along and dominates the sport for a number of years. But for me, climbing out of the cockpit and, and being greeted by my wife and friends, well, that was, without a doubt, the, the biggest moment of my life. <laughs>